Okay, so now what we want to do is go ahead and calculate the normal probability, or I should say using the normal distribution. So let's start this over. All right, so to start with the normal probability, once again, we know that Q is going to be equal to 1 minus P. Make sure that we have that which is going to be 1 minus 0.5, which is 0.5. Now, we need to go ahead and find n times p and n times q. And both of them must be greater than 5, or greater than or equal to. Okay, so n times p is going to be 16 times 0.5, and n times q is going to be the same thing, 16 times 0.5. This is not always going to happen, okay? You, you have to make sure that you understand that sometimes n and p, or actually most times, n and p will not be the same value. So this is going to be equal to 8, which is definitely greater than or equal to 5. Likewise, this is equal to 8, which is greater than or equal to 5, which means that I can approximate the binomial distribution using the normal or I should say the binomial probability using the normal probability. In order to do that, we're going to need to find our mean, and we're going to need to find our standard deviation. So mu is simply going to be n times p, and we already know what that is. That's equal to 16 times 0.5, which is equal to 8. And the standard deviation sigma is going to be equal to the square root of the product NPQ, which is the square root of 16 times 0.5 times 0.5, which is simply equal to 2. So now we need to go ahead and understand if we need to use the co continuity correction. So the first thing that we want to do is write this as a discrete probability and it's going to be the probability and it's the exact same thing that we had started with 5 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 7 which means that if we're going to use a continuity correction, we're actually going to write this as the probability of 4.5 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 7.5. So that way we want to make sure that we get around those endpoints. Okay, so now what we need to do is find z-scores for x equals 4.5 and x equals 7.5. So let's go with z sub 1. And remember, we're going to use z is equal to x minus mu divided by sigma. So in this case, it's going to be 4.5 minus 8 over 2. And that will be equal to negative 1.75. And then for z sub 2, which will be our upper bound, that will be 7.5 minus 8 divided by 2, which is also going to be a negative value, which is negative 0.25. Now, what that means is I can go ahead and write this in terms of the z-scores, and this is going to be the probability that negative 1.75 is less than or equal to z, less than or equal to negative 0 0.25. There's two ways to do this. I can go ahead and use the good old fashioned normal table, or I can use technology. I'm going to use both. So we're going to start with the normal table. 
So we'll write this as the probability of z is equal to negative 0 0.25 minus the probability that z is equal to negative 1.75. So z is equal to negative 0.25. Here's the negative 0.2, and this is a column with the 0.5 in it. So I mean the 0.05. So this is my z score, or I should say the probability that re corresponds to the z score. So it's going to be 0 0.4013 minus, and then z is equal to negative 1.7. And then we're going to use the same column. And so this is my, whoops, corresponding z-score. I mean, corresponding probability for the z-score. And that's going to be 0 0.0401. And so that's going to be equal to 0.3612. Now let me show you how to do this using StatCrunch. All right, so to use StatCrunch, we're going to actually go back to this page, okay, because we're going to need the mean and the standard deviation, which we know that the mean is going to be 8 right here, and then the standard deviation is 2, and then we're going to be using x of 4.5 and x of 7.5. So let's go ahead and plug those values into StatCrunch. So we're going to go to Stat, Calculators, down to Normal. We're going to do Between. The mean, remember, is 8, so we type that in. Standard deviation is 2. P is going to be from 4.5, less than or equal to X, less than or equal to 7.5. We will go ahead and left-click Compute, and we'll note that we get 0.3612. And you'll see that the values are in the red here on our standard distribution. So 0.3612 is what we got when we calculated it manually. So either way, we end up with 0.3612. And so <clears throat> since the binomial distribution, P of 5 less than or equal to X less than or equal to 7, was equal to 0.3634 and the probability of 4.5 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 7.5 was equal to 0.3612. We can go ahead and calculate the differences, but we note that these are roughly the same. And if we did an absolute value of the difference, and we'll start with the binomial minus the normal, we'll see that we have 0.3634 minus 0.3612, and that's going to give us a difference of 0 0.00. 2, 2, which is tiny. This is a very small difference. Therefore, and we're going to use the math symbol for therefore, considered the same or about the same. 